I want to give you some really good information to hopefully end seizures. Okay. If you have them, what is a seizure? It's an uncontrollable shaking motion of either your whole body or one part of your body with different levels of unconsciousness. So with some people, you can go completely unconscious. Other people, you can go partially unconscious. And a seizure is in a single episode of that event. And epilepsy is a condition where you have multiple or ongoing seizures. Now they're triggered by various things, uh, fever, a head injury, infection in the brain, choking, alcohol, or drug withdrawal. Extreme low blood sugar can trigger them. Certain drugs and toxins can trigger them. And by the way, as a side note, uh, since we're talking about toxicity in relationship to triggering a seizure, uh, B6 is an effective remedy to help lower the toxicity. And then of course you have various types of stresses or even high blood pressure that can trigger a seizure event. And there's many theories on what causes a seizure, but typically it's a, a hyper excitability of a nerve. And if you look up seizure and Wikipedia, you'll have a lot of great information, all describing what it is and the various medications that you can use, unfortunately, with a lot of side effects. And then when you get to this thing called the ketogenic diet, you'll see that there's low quality evidence to show that the ketogenic diet is effective, but you can use the ketogenic diet for a very specific type of epilepsy, which is called drug resistant epilepsy. So if the drugs don't work, then you can use the ketogenic diet. I found that very interesting. In fact, it's a great marketing strategy to uh, position the ketogenic diet as some side thing that you might want to try if the drugs don't work first. And the truth is that there's hardcore data that shows that the ketogenic diet is very effective at at least eliminating seizures by a factor of 50 to 70%. And it's used by many doctors in the medical profession in different hospitals. But there's several big differences uh, with the ketogenic diet used for like seizures for children versus maybe the ketogenic diet that you're on right now. And the big difference that I see is they are using for children, especially probably the dirtiest keto uh, diet that you can be on. I mean, the ingredients are so unhealthy. And the definition of dirty keto is you're using any type of ingredients that you can find, regardless of quality, as long as the carbohydrates are low. But with this diet pertaining to epilepsy, you are using a slightly different ratio. You're using uh, more fat to protein. So it's like four to one, four times more fat than you are protein. And what that's going to do, is going to get you into deeper ketosis. And the deeper in ketosis you are, the better the results uh, for your brain. Now, let's just talk about a ketone, okay? Because a ketone really is the answer to seizures and many other brain problems. What is a ketone? It's a byproduct of fat, okay? Some people call it an alternative fuel source when it's not an alternative fuel source. It is the main fuel source our bodies were designed to run on. Glucose is an alternative fuel source. If you disagree with me, then how do you explain the fact that our bodies were designed to store and run on a lot more fat than glucose? If we were to run on glucose as the primary fuel source, we wouldn't be here now. A long time ago, we didn't have all you can eat buffets. We didn't have all these available snacks that we have now. Uh, we had to go hunt for our foods and there were probably days that we didn't eat. And that's why our bodies were originally designed to tap into our own fat reserve and make ketones. We only have a very limited amount of glucose in our bodies that it's stored in our liver. You probably have like a day's worth, that's it. So from a survival standpoint, fat and ketones are really the primary fuel source that our bodies are designed to run on. So we flip this and now people have this idea that you know sugar is normal and uh, we can include a lot of carbs because that's the brain's primary fuel source. It's just led to all sorts of problems with blood sugars, prediabetes, diabetes, and even type three diabetes, which is Alzheimer's. And so the brain is heavily affected by glucose. If the brain has a choice between a ketone and glucose, it will always pick the ketone first as its fuel source, so even if they're together in your blood. So the brain loves ketones. All right, so let's talk about ketones in relationship to this problem. 
ketones have some really cool properties. One is it has anti-convulsant properties. Okay, what's a convulsion? It's a seizure. This sudden, violent, irregular movement by your body. Ketones stabilize the excitability of your neurons. And so if your neurons are hyperexcited and out of control, ketones can calm them down. Ketones also modulate or control neurotransmitters. And ketones just do a lot for the brain, uh, including the hippocampus, the main area of the brain that's responsible for uh, memories and learning. And so many people have a problem with that when they're not on the ketogenic diet, um, as in dementia. But ketones have been found to increase the hippocampus mitochondrial biogenesis by 43%. And there's definitely an association between mitochondrial energy and epilepsy. Ketones protect the brain, protect the neurons against oxidative stress. Ketones increase the amount of ATP in the neurons to allow them to function better, way more than glucose. So the answer to seizures is to get on the healthy version of the ketogenic diet. So I do want to mention uh, some of the ingredients that they use for children on this ketogenic diet. But first, I just want to mention all the side effects that occur from this diet. You have number one, hypoglycemia. Well, the only reason that you would have hypoglycemia on this diet is that you are not really in ketosis long enough for your body to adapt to it. Maybe you're doing it on the weekends and then, but not during the weekday. Now, there is one point about this because when you no longer consume the amount of glucose and sugar and you're on other foods that are low in carb, your blood sugars will drop, but you won't feel bad. But the fact that you're not putting sugar into your body is going to reflect in lower blood sugars. And it could be down, down to the sixties. Okay. And sometimes even high fifties and you could still feel fine, but sometimes people don't differentiate this and they think, oh my gosh, that's dangerous. You have hypoglycemia yet you have no symptoms and they, they recommend that you have orange juice or sugar, okay, every 20 minutes to get the blood sugar up. Well, that's just gonna create more and more of the problem. So the way to solve hypoglycemia is to really make sure your body is adapted to ketones so you can actually run on this fat fuel and you're not susceptible to the highs and lows of the blood sugar. Now, another side effect that occurs with this type of diet is acidosis, okay? So the person's just too acid. So that's going to lead to potentially kidney stones as a side effect, vomiting as a side effect, uh, nauseousness, sleeplessness, but there's a really simple solution. Just get on the healthy version of the ketogenic diet where you're going to offset all the acidity that's generated with the ketones by having more of the alkaline type non-starchy vegetables. Okay. So we will talk about that in a minute, but I just wanted to mention there's a very simple solution, but if you're on the the dirty version of this ketogenic diet, boy, you're going to have a lot of side effects. And so there goes the compliance. Uh, you're not going to stick with it for a very long time. And also lemons or limes in your water for the citrates. So that way you can really bring down the risk factor for these kidney stones, not to mention drinking enough water, like two and a half liters of water every day. And you will definitely prevent kidney stones. Now, of course, if you're a small child, uh, you probably don't need to drink that much. Now, there's also other side effects uh, relating to um, nutrient deficiencies. And of course, when someone is in the hospital being prescribed the ketogenic diet by a dietitian, they're not going to differentiate uh, the synthetic vitamins versus the natural vitamins or food-based vitamins. They're going to give you synthetics and other things in these vitamins that I don't think are very healthy. But there are several vitamin groups that um, you should always consider when doing the ketogenic diet. Okay. Number one, the B vitamins, especially B1. Number two, the electrolytes, potassium, magnesium, calcium, sodium, chloride, as well as the other minerals as well, like trace minerals. And I also recommend omega-3 fatty acids, okay? Like in cod liver oil would be best, but you can do fish oils. Another side effect is skin rashes, but that's probably because of the omega-3 fatty acid deficiency that, um, that's not handled but I'm gonna explain why they usually have those rashes in a second. So now let's get into what is a typical diet for these children on the dirty ketogenic plan. So they're recommending things like sugar-free Jello, uh, sugar-free soda, mayonnaise, which is just 
filled with soy oil, which is high in omega-6, which is going to create a lot of skin problems, inflammation of the brain, heavy whipping cream. So it's probably just regular whipping cream from grain-fed cows, which definitely have higher amounts of omega-6. And then they also allow like saccharin, which is an artificial sweetener and things like that, which you know, have problems. There's also this thing called a keto kale shake powder, right? And the first ingredient is refined soy oil, and it's in a powder. And then they have the casein, which is milk protein and lactose, which is milk sugar, and then corn syrup salads, which I'm not sure why they add that. They add some whey protein powder. And then they add these two oils, fungus oils. When they process these oils, they use chemical solvents, which are linked as a neurotoxin. You see, when you're trying to feed the brain nutrition, you don't want to use neurotoxins. And the side effects from these oils are diarrhea, vomiting, bloating, and dehydration. So here's what I recommend. If this is for your child or yourself and you have seizures, you definitely need to get on the ketogenic diet. How do you generate ketones? Well, you can do it through the diet by going low carb, but definitely do the healthy version, but you can also do intermittent fasting. Let's see you just, if it's a child, just do three meals with no snacks. Make sure the meals are healthy enough. If you're an adult and you have seizures, boy, you can generate a lot of ketones and get into deep ketosis just by doing one meal a day, okay? And doing fasting, very, very powerful. Now you can also take ketones as a supplement to increase ketones because remember, if given the choice, even if you're not on a pure ketogenic diet, if there's ketones in the blood, the brain will extract the ketones over the glucose. So that's just another little tip for those people that need to increase the amount of ketones for their brain. You want to eat foods uh, that are high in fat, a little bit lower in protein, okay? Because too much protein can stimulate insulin and that'll knock you out of ketosis. So different sausages are really fatty, like more than the protein. You don't want to do lean protein, anything. Um, another way to get more fat is to buy hamburger that's more fatty. Don't get the lean hamburger. If you're going to eat things like chicken, make sure the skin's on it. Uh, don't do the lean chicken breast. Cook with more butter. Put grass-fed butter on your vegetables. And definitely you need to beef up, no pun intended, non-starchy vegetables as much as possible. That will offset the ketoacidosis, the pH problem. It'll give you the minerals that you need. It'll help keep the liver clean of uh, a lot of this uh, fat that's being mobilized uh, through the liver. Avocados are really fatty. You can also do fatty nuts, the macadamia nut. Pecans are really fatty. The eggs are really good. Cod liver oil. Now for a child, you can get cod liver oil that virtually does not taste like fish. It has a lemon uh, flavor to it. And that's one I have. I don't taste any fish. I drink it, it goes down easy. I'll take two tablespoons a day and I'm good to go. And you can even get your uh, B vitamins from nutritional yeast. I like to add nutritional yeast, non-fortified to my salad with some dressing on there. That's like olive oil and some balsamic vinaigrette. And it gives it a little bit of a cheesy flavor, but that way you can get all your B vitamins as well. Also, you can add exercise, okay? Exercise will also increase more ketones in your body. So if you add that, now you're in deep ketosis. That's going to greatly help your seizures. I have a little bit more information on a really good diet that will be a little bit higher in fat and less protein. And I put that up right here. Check it out.